Dallas with our keynote speaker, Jim Stangle. Jim, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Love to ask you a few questions. So what do you see right now as some of the hottest trends in the marketing industry, if you had to name a couple? Well, I think the long-term trend on brands finding and activating their purpose is hotter than ever. You know, I was at the Cannes Festival this summer with all the highly awarded work in our industry, and everything that won gold or Grand Prix started with a, a compelling purpose that excites employees and excites customers. So that certainly is, I think, a really positive mega trend. And most of the brands we find growing, you know, their share, their consumer engagement, customer engagement are activating on, on purpose. But the other one that I think is really positive is um, big companies, legacy companies are getting way scrappier. Mm. You know, they're learning from startups, they're learning from their partnerships, they're learning from acquisitions. They're moving, they're learning from people like Jesse Horowitz at Hubble Contacts, at Kylie Jenner and how she <laughs> had built an amazing brand really through Instagram and through her own personality and through being agile. So the big brands are not, are, are, are watching that and thinking about the implications. So I think it's a really healthy trend uh, to be thinking about how we operate more agile, how we're scrappier, how we try more things, how we are okay with piloting and failing fast and and learning lessons from these startups and learning lessons from the, like, the big companies like Amazon that keep the culture of, of piloting and experimentation even when they have the scale they have. And it sounds like that is what your new book is about, which we'll get to in a bit. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, so you've obviously had quite a successful run at Procter & Gamble. And so I'm curious, what is the greatest lesson that you have taken away from your experience there? Sure, well, you know, I was at Procter & Gamble for 25 years, so when I started, it was a $10 billion company, mostly sales in the U.S. When I left, it was $84 billion with a large international presence. <laughs> yeah, and, and when I was CMO, we doubled our size. So it was a great run. I've been out of it 10 years, but I was there for 25. And I would have to say that um, it was a tremendous learning organization, you know, and still is. Uh, there are a few things I took away. The first is the power of purpose, right? I saw it transform brands like like Pampers, you know, like Tide, like Old Spice even. You know, it starts with what are we trying to do in the world, who we, what impact are we trying to make? So I certainly learned that. I saw the power of business growth behind purpose. Um, and I also, you know, I, I, I learned how important it is to, to develop your organization. You did not get ahead at P&G if you did not bring people along and you were not a good people developer. You know, we used to measure people on their brand growth, their, you know, equity and so on, their business growth and their people growth. And that's a really, really powerful lesson. And I guess the last one is um, the consumer was always in the room at P&G. You know, we never made a decision without thinking about the consumer. So uh, that was always the first question when you started a new initiative meeting or a, a new product review or a budget meeting. You know, how do we do against the consumer, with the consumer this year, and what are our plans to delight her even more, to bring the experience to life? So, and that's not in every company. That's a very special part of PNG's DNA, uh, which, um, which is so fundamental. This new customer-centric approach is <laughs> very important. And <laughs> the great companies have always had that. Right. And the, the challenge for leadership is to keep it, mm -hmm. and to be exactly. keep vigilant, never get complacent about sure. it. Sure. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so back to your new book now, mm -hmm. Unleashing the Innovators. Um, again, a big success for you. So the major theme of this work is focused on um, companies finding new energy um, to jumpstart revenue. So from your experience, how does this partnership between a legacy company and a startup um, renew themselves? Sure. Well, you know, this, um, this book was a fun project. You know, uh, it was really, it seemed to everywhere I went, big companies were working with startups, but they were kind of writing their own playbook. And it was still new and emerging, and, and I thought, this is really interesting. They're interesting companies, personalities, relationships. So I started studying, and I went and visited about 120 companies personally. Uh, I did a quant study with 200 companies. And what the, you know, I, I learned so much, and the book is full of helpful stories. 
And at the end of the day, it became a book I wrote for large companies trying to reinvent themselves. It's sort of, sort, of, uh, sort of a playbook of how to leverage partnerships to do that. And I think the most foundational learning was that those leaders, those companies who used the learning from startups to change their core culture for the, for the positive were the ones that were really excelling. And, and I certainly found that at Target. I found it at, at Wells Fargo. I found it at IBM. I found it at GE, I found it at Motorola, and, and some were more successful than others, but they were all trying to extract how those companies worked, how the startups worked, how they made decisions, how they told their story, the sense of ownership, the sense of pride, and they were trying to bring that into their larger culture, and that is really powerful. And of course, partnerships always, you know, uh, some work, some don't, but you know, you, you usually enter them to find new revenue, to acquire new technology, to bring a really remarkable team into your company, but those that had a deliberate way of extracting the learning of how they work into the larger enterprise were the ones that were maximizing the benefit from the, from the partnerships. Very interesting. So throughout this book, then we're seeing little stories from each company and, and how they're doing that? Absolutely. That and I show yeah. all the different models and, and hopefully give people some lessons, some ideas, and also some inspiration wow. if they're trying to improve by their, through their partnerships. And every company right. is working partnerships. You know, right. It's only going to get more intense. Mm -hmm. It's very true. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the Young Marketers Academy at Cannes Lions Festival and uh, how you created it and, and what it means for the future of the industry. Well, you know, I'm a little bit famous in the industry for being the first person to bring clients to Cannes way back in 2003. You know, it was a creative festival back then where the creatives got together and judged each other's work, and it was a big award show. Um, and a creative at Saatchi and Saatchi at the time, I was CMO at P&G in my early days as CMO at P&G, I was trying to, you know, help the culture be more creative and innovative and daring. And a creative head at Saatchi and Saatchi said to me, you should take a team to Cannes. It will just shake you up when you see what's happening across the industry. So I took his words to heart. We took 30 people in 2003 to Cannes. There were really no other clients there in any great numbers. And now there's, I don't know, I think 30% of the festival is clients. So thousands of people are there. Over 500 client brands are there. So I saw the power of it live. I, but, and, and what I saw was that people came back not accepting the kind of work they were accepting. Standards changed. So back in 2003, we took teams there and they went back to their work at PNG and said, damn it, we're better than this. Right. <laughs> We've got to raise our standards for engagement, for creativity, for impact, for purpose. So work got remarkably better. And, and so what, when I left PNG, the festival and I started talking, how can we help clients use the experience of CAN in a deeper, more profound way? How can we make it more actionable for them? So, uh, so we started by bringing young talent from across the industry. So we reached out to the great companies of the world, you know, the Unilevers, the PNGs, the Fords, the Googles, the Facebooks, and said, you know, what do you think of this idea? And they loved it. So we've had anywhere from 35 to 70 young marketers for a week at Cannes, and we curate the week for them and we bring in very special experiences, they do workshops, they practice, and they go home with a concrete action plan. And the, and the biggest theme is they go home restless. Mm -hmm. They wanna change things for the better. So, so that's the insight behind the Young Marketers. Two years later, we started a CMO Academy, and this year we had 49 CMOs in the Academy, people from the banking industry, people from the dating industry, and we had all sorts of business models in there. And it's the same insight, you know? they go back at a higher level with a, just a different attitude toward what is good enough and what is not. There's nothing like changing your standards. I mean, it's, uh, it's what's nice about meetings like this. You go home and you say, you know, I have a, I'm not sure we're doing things the right way. I'm not sure we're, uh, you know, I just think we could play at a higher level. Wow, well, it sounds like a very unique experience. That's really It's great. fun, too. <laughs> that, that's always important. <laughs> um, so, you know, you kind of just touched upon this, but you obviously go to plenty of conferences and different events. And so I'm curious why you think coming to an event like ours at the Millennium Alliance is important for marketing executives across the board. One chapter in my new book is about keeping an outsider's mindset. 
and it's kind of every, uh, every CEO that I interviewed for this book, you know, ranging from Ginny Rometty to Brian Cornell to Marcelo Clare, you know, they, Ginny Rometty's been at IBM more than 30 years. She has kept an outsider's mindset. She's helped them shift their business model many times. Uh, Marcelo came in sort of outside the industry and has really changed Sprint for the better. So it's a challenge for all of us to keep, keep neutral, keep objective, uh, keep our eyes open. And, and I was just reading Beth Comstock's new book, which is coming out in September. She just left GE as, as vice chair. She's a remarkable leader. And she has a whole chapter in her book about her experience in keeping an outsider's mindset. That's what this meeting is about, right? We're learning from others. We're getting out of our own company and out of our own silo and looking how others are doing work. Uh, we had IBM in the room this morning sharing many case studies of how people are leveraging Watson. So that is so important, and so many of us don't spend enough time on that. You know, we get caught up in our own culture, our internal stuff, our internal politics, uh, our full calendar, uh, but it is so important. I think about the most remarkable experiences in my career, most of them started by some experience I had outside the company that I brought back in. So it's really just getting out of the office and just having these conversations with other executives, whether it's in the same industry, different industry, it's just getting out there and it's talking. It's priceless, right. it's priceless. We can never stop doing that. Right. Well, you know, I can't let you leave without asking. <laughs> uh, what would you say is your number one tip for marketers, especially for the rest of 2018 and looking into 2019? I think the biggest tip is, is your team, is your company operating on purpose? Do they have a sense of a higher mission, a higher ideal, a higher purpose? Is it meaningful to them? Is it meaningful to your customers? And are you activating it like crazy? Does everyone understand their role in it? When you see that happening in a company, you're unstoppable. So is your purpose clear, understood, acted upon, with everyone feeling like they have a role in it. That's it. That's great. We'll definitely be thinking about that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. It's great Cara. to have you here. Super. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.